attack, but from Wet Fly Today, this is the Cardinal. This also is out of Ray Bergman's book, Trout. Ran across this fly not too long ago. I thought it was rather interesting because the Cardinal originally was tied with Cardinal feathers or slips in the wing. And it got me to thinking that a lot of those older flies that uh, have been around a long time either were named after or had part of the materials that they were used in the name, like the ibis and white. Nowadays, we used to use a red duck quill or goose quill for the ibis and white, but back in those days, they didn't have all these great dyes that we have today. So they actually used part of an ibis feather. The cardinal is kind of the same thing in that the flight feathers of the cardinal aren't a bright uh, white, they're, uh, excuse me, a bright red. They're more of a maroon kind of color. So today we can get away with duck or goose that is dyed a claret color for the cardinal. But I just thought it was kind of interesting. Plus, this is probably one of the quickest and simplest wet flies you're ever going to tie. If you're comfortable with doing this style of wing, these go really, really simple. There's only three ingredients to the whole fly. So that's the cardinal. I'll go ahead and get started. Begin the cardinal by placing my hook in the vise. This is a Muscat 3399 in a size 6. As I mentioned, probably one of the simplest wet flies that you can tie. I'm going to debarb the hook. Then I'm going to attach my thread. For thread, I'm starting off with a white. This is a Danville 6 aught in white. You don't necessarily have to because it's a chenille body should cover up any black thread, but I'm going to lay down a, a base layer of white just to keep that chenille a brighter white. I'm going to attach my thread about an eye length behind the eye of the hook. I'm going to run it down to just past the point of the hook. For chenille, I am just using, this is a rayon fine chenille and white. You could use a medium if you want a little bit thicker body on this. If I were going down to say a size 8 hook or 10 or 12 or something, then I definitely would be using a fine, possibly even an ultra, which is even finer. I'm going to tie that in. Advance my thread forward to about an eye length behind the eye of the hook. I'm going to grab my tackle pliers. That way I can give this chenille a little bit of a twist just to tighten it up. And it also helps give me a little bit of an extension. It makes it a little easier working around the bobbin as I'm applying the body. Once I get to the thread, I'll secure that. Get three nice wraps in there, cut away the excess. As I had stated, there's just three components to this fly. There is no tip, no tail, no tag, anything. It's just the body, throat, and a wing. I'm going to bring my thread to the eye of the hook, and then I'm going to change over to the black thread. This is a Danville 6 aught in black. Put a little bit of wax on my thread. Wrap part way down in the head. I'll secure the tag as well as the white thread and then I can clip those off. 
then I can proceed, take the black thread down to the back of the head space where I'll tie in my throat. The throat on the cardinal is just some white schloppen. It's a white hackle, so even if you're using a hen or something like that, I'm just going to use some white schloppen. Since this is such a quick fly and it's going to be a little bit shorter video, I'm going to take a little bit of time to show you my process for actually processing this feather uh, and getting the two slips for the throat. All the fluff here, I'm just going to peel this off. I'm not actually going to peel all of it off because then I can just cut the excess off. I want to make certain that any of the barbs like these right here that have the uh, split tips or that are just a little bit limper and everything, I don't want those in there. So, and then I'll even up both sides of the feather so that. I have barbs on both sides. Now, as you can see, I don't have any holes or any gaps or it's it's not torn up. Not to say that you couldn't Let's see if I can find one here. Uh, this this is an example of one where it's nice and solid on this side, but it's all curved here. You could actually iron that out, maybe steam that out. But if you have some that even have the tip of this feather is an example. It's, I wouldn't use it. These are too short. But you can see where it's missing some barbs in here. And if you had that happening down here in this lower section, you could still use those. You could pe peel those out and use them, for especially for a fishing fly. But they may not go that well if you're wanting to do something more formal. So with my feather prepped, I'm going to, on one side, and get the barbs about 90 degrees to the stem. And then I'll peel those off. I'll massage those together so that they're all pretty much zipped up. And I've got one little slip of schloppen. Turning the feather around, I'll then take off the same amount off the other side. I'll get them 90 degrees to the rachis. Holding those, then I'll peel those off. Now I have the second slip, and you'll notice it's kind of the opposite of the other one. It's got a little bit of a curve, curves up just a little bit. I can then place that on top of the other one that I just had sitting on my desk, and I can bring those two together. Now I have just a nice wide slip, two slips of slopping for my throat. I'm going to place this underneath the hook. The tips are going to go back about to the barb. A little pinch and loop underneath to tie that in. And then I'll trim away the excess. Bring my thread forward. I'm going to clean up the headspace here so that I have a nice smooth headspace for the wing. So for the wings, I'm simply using some goose quill. This is a, a dyed claret goose quill. Something I wanted to point out to you, since this is a little bit shorter video, when you're matching these uh, quills up, usually you're going to want to match them so that the length of the barbs are about the same, so that the, the two slips will match up really nice and even. This particular set that I have, you'll notice, I've got a fairly nice feather right here. There's not a lot of holes in it. It's all in pretty good shape. But this one over here is kind of torn up. The ends are a little bit torn up right in here. <clears throat> Excuse me, in here. Got some gaps, and I've got uh, some holes and gaps down here. You can still use this feather. I mean, both of these paired together. You can clip out the one side, and your other side here, I've already cut two or three out here before I got to this damage section. And all I'm going to do here is just peel a lot of this out. So I'm just going to take this right off the feather. I can't use it. It's no good. And I'll peel this up. And then you'll see I even have some right here where the barbules have just been busted off. And I've got a whole barb right here that's uh, busted right there. So I'm just going to peel a few more out. 
just to get to where I have a good section. Now I have a good section right here that I can clip and match up with the other section to make the wing. I'll match up the tips of those. I want to make certain I have those matching first. And then I'll double check the width. The one on the far side here on your side is a little wider. So I'll take my bodkin in here and just peel those out. Taking the wing and putting it on top here, if I had a tail on this, it's only going to be about this long. So I want the tips to come down about halfway down the tail. In other words, just a little bit past the bend, or you could look at it as the lower part of this angled portion of the wing. It's going to be right about even with the bend of the hook. Little pinch and loop. Four or five wraps to secure that in, and we'll take a look at our wing. Turned out pretty well. Put a couple more wraps to secure that, and then trim away the excess. Bring my thread down to the eye of the hook. I'll wrap backwards, forming the head. Covering up all the butt ends and just making a nice, neat head to the fly. I'm going to flatten out my thread and then I'll put in a 9 or 10 turn whip finish. A little bit of head cement and our cardinal is done. And then I'll come back and put a couple layers of black lacquer on that to dress up the head a little bit and that cardinal is all done. As I said, this is just a very, very simple fly, three materials to it. I chose it because I, I like the idea of, well, it's called the cardinal because of the, the cardinal wings. And even though I'm not using cardinal in it, I just like some of these flies that actually did use some of those lesser known materials today that we, we uh, just substitute with stuff that's dyed. So there's the Cardinal. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help dressed irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.